In your study of physics, especially if you study relativity theory, you probably heard it said that there is no ether rest frame, or there is no rest frame of space. That's a lie. And first, I mean, that came about in part because people say there is no ether, and if there is no ether, then ether can't have a rest frame. But as I explained in a previous video, there is an ether because the quantum field exists, and the quantum field is in every respect an ether. You can review that video, I put a link below. And we can think of it in terms of the particle pair model of space, that space is filled with quantum particle pairs that make electric charge dipoles. And this is regular established quantum field theory. And it's backed up by the fact that space is polarizable and magnetizable. And also the Casimir effect exists, which is due to van der Waals forces between quantum fluctuations. And van der Waals forces require there be electric charge dipoles. And this, the van der Waals forces are experimentally been confirmed. And so this is a real thing. Space is filled with dipoles like this. And when these dipoles come into being, they have a range of different frequencies and wavelengths, a range of different orientations, and a range of different rotation that just comes about as part of their coming in and out of existence. So there's going to be a frame of reference, which is a rest frame where the amount of rotation is equal and average in all directions. And you will see a uniform space around an object, like shown in black here. And that is going to be the rest frame. Then if you, an object moves relative to these quantum dipoles, there will appear, appear to be preferential rotation in one direction that's due to the motion of the object, not the motion of the rest frame of the quantum field. And so it's impossible to have an object move without having this effective rotational effect occur. And so the rotation is extremely important. So when you have equal rotation, that starts out with the quantum torque is at its um, minimum. The quantum field filled with dipoles not only have van der Waals forces that causes jiggling of space that can push two plates together, like in the Casimir effect, it also has a torque that as when one dipole rotates, the dipoles around it are going to have a tendency to want to rotate. But their natural tendency is to not move. And so the existence of all these dipoles resists rotation. So any form of rotation or motion or linear motion causes an increase in torque locally. And the torque effect is what limits the, the electric and magnetic constant, which determines the speed of light, because the speed of light is determined by the electric and magnetic constant. So in the rest frame, we have a condition where the torque is at a minimum, the electric and magnetic constants are at a minimum. The speed of light is at a maximum. And Maxwell realized in the 1860s that the quantum field, or the ether rest frame, as he knew it, was where the speed of light had its maximum speed, uh, because he, he was aware of this relationship. Um, so when we have a body moving, we get a different effect. The van der Waals torque increases effectively, which causes the permittivity and permeability, the electric and magnetic constants, to increase, which, because they're inversely proportional, reduces the speed of light. But at the same time, it also reduces clock rates. So a moving body that has clocks on it those physical clocks are going to run slower at the same rate that the speed of light is slower, which makes the speed of light looks like it's constant when it's actually, we shouldn't really be thinking of it as being constant. It's only constant because of the ratio of the clocks and, and the speed of light changing at the same time. 
So this is one of the offshoots of the existence of the quantum field and a quantum field having a rest frame. We also know that quantum field has a rest frame from the cosmic microwave background radiation. And we've actually been able to measure the R speed relative to the rest frame of the cosmic microwave background. And as I mentioned in previous video, videos, the cosmic microwave background is black body radiation emitted in the vacuum of space. But any black body radiation emitted in a vacuum is initiated by a quantum fluctuation interacting with a body and then obtaining some of its thermal energy and turning the quantum fluctuation into a photon. So the cosmic microwave background, in addition to giving us a picture of some form of energy throughout the universe, it gives us a picture of what's happening with the quantum field and it gives us a measurable uh, quantum field rest frame so we can identify it. So what does that mean? In relativity theory, under special relativity, Einstein decided to say that there is no rest frame. And in the original relativity theories of Larmor, Poincaré, Lorentz, they all considered that there was a ether rest frame. And so there was two formulations of relativity theory in the early 1900s. And Einstein won out because of the denial of the existence of ether and the failure to recognize at that time that the, the quantum field was and is uh, essentially the ether. So scientists chose the wrong way to go. Special relativity in its current form needs to be abandoned and replaced with relativity theory where there is a rest frame which means going back to formulations of Poincaré and Lorentz and then updating those based on our newer knowledge about the quantum field. And so Einstein's lie about the non-existence of uh, ether rest frame has led to numerous mistakes with relativity theory that need to be corrected. And physicists need to acknowledge that quantum field theory and special relativity are not compatible, if for no other reason, because of this issue with the existence or non-existence of an ether rest frame. Well, if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more, um, look for future videos and look through my previous videos. And I also have some books that you can buy to learn more about what I've discovered in my 30 plus years of research in quantum field theory. And if you'd like to support me as an independent researcher, I do have a Patreon account as well. So thanks for watching.